praise him, praise him, praise him. Worship him. Wor some of you got some problems you need to forget about right now. Some of you got some worries you need to shout out right now. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I might not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for second chances. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you for my right mind. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We worship you, God. We praise your holy name. We praise your name. Praise your name. You're worthy. Come on. Is he worthy, church? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Come on. He who has been forgiven much, loves much. Do you love him? Do you love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength tonight? Somebody love Jesus. Somebody love him. Show God some love in the house tonight. Yes, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes I hate, like, the routine, you know what I mean? Like, five minutes of this and two minutes of that and three minutes. Now, that's not to say you better stick to your ten minutes or I'm going to yank you off the stage. But, but sometimes we just got to give God glory, amen? Amen. Sometimes he can do more just through the fruit of our lips, just worshiping and praising him more than all of the other stuff that we think is so important. Let's let God do what God wants to do tonight. How many got, want God to move tonight, amen? How many want God to just move? And you want to hear something fresh from God? You just want to, something to be stirred in you? Some, you don't want to leave here the same. How many don't want to leave here the same? God, I want to leave encouraged. I want to leave changed. I want to leave transformed. Let's just create an atmosphere of expectancy tonight, amen? amen? Create an atmosphere that we just believe that God loves us so much that He's not going to leave us in the same way, amen? amen. How many come hungry tonight? Hallelujah. How many come expecting to receive, amen? Um, so we've got a, a few speakers tonight, and uh, uh, we teach a class on Friday. My wife and I teach a class on Friday right here. Uh, and uh, it's for those who believe that God has called you to speak. And uh, we ask for an eight-week commitment um, to come in and uh, work with us. We do some exercises and we just, uh, you know, trust in God that, that God will help you to develop and to use your gifts uh, to speak this glorious gospel. And uh, it's a good time. It's a blessing. It gives us an opportunity in a smaller setting to get to know some of you better. And so it's open up to everybody. Just let your leaders know, and you're welcome to come uh, Friday night in the Hacienda from 6 to 7.30. And so tonight we have an opportunity to let three of the people from the class speak. And so I'm getting ready to introduce them. Amen. But first, uh, how many know that your daddy's proud of you? Amen. Because he's a good, good father. So, uh, I'm proud of my children. I have a daughter, El Shaddai. Come here, El Shaddai. Some of you know El Shaddai, right? She's, she's taking on, out of all my children, she's taking on my rapid genes. And, uh, but um, she's uh, turning 10 on Wednesday. Amen? You know, we got to sing happy birthday. Uh, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Woo happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And for everybody else who had a birthday this week, this time. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And so glad that. that uh, who else had a birthday? Anybody else? Oh, wow. We've got quite a few. Quite a few July babies. July and Phoenix being born. Man, your poor mothers. That's not nice. 
nice, man. That's not nice. I was born in January in a blizzard. Amen. In a blizzard. <clears throat> Praise God. I'm a little older than 10. Just a little. All right. So, are we ready? Everybody ready with stage and all that good stuff? So tonight, um, we've got three speakers I'm excited about. I'm going to tell you what. It's just it's such a privilege Again, you know, the class isn't about trying to make you preach like I preach or nothing like that. Um, and, and really, you need to know that this, is, this class came out of your pastor's heart. Uh, I did this before when I worked at the, you know, upstairs. And um, uh, pastor has always had a desire to use people, just like you said tonight, a bunch of misfits like us. But he wants to use people who are equipped as well, right? How many know sometimes you give somebody a mic and it's just like... Uh, you regret the moment that you let it go, amen? And <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, sometimes it's not, it's not nice. Uh, it's like, wow, you just wasted 10 years of my life. I mean, uh, but I'm kidding, but I'm not. Because, because listen, uh, if we have a few minutes to speak something on behalf of God, we should take advantage of those few minutes, and we should be prepared, and we should be studied up. Because, listen, this is my gifting, and my gifting, when I give it back to God, that's my act of worship. And so for me to come up here and just give all any old sloppy old seconds to God, that's not, that doesn't cost me anything. And so I encourage people to study. I give them a way to study. Uh, I give them a way of thinking about the scriptures so that they can speak and speak, you know, uh, with with some something behind it, amen. With anointing, with power, with some understanding, and so uh, that that's important to us. And so that's that's Pastor's heart. That's why he wanted this class, um, and he wants to take those people and you know take them to other churches, and so they know the difference between giving a testimony and preaching, right? How many times does Pastor up here and he goes give a testimony, and then they start preaching? He goes, now nah, you're preaching, right? So you need to know the difference. And, and so that's what our pastor wants. And, and we want to be able to open the doors and take people in to jail services and group home services and, and have them, you know, operate in their gift. You're blessed. Let me tell you, you're blessed to have a pastor that shares ministry with you, that shares the opportunity for you to use your gift. Because there's a lot of gifted, a lot of talented, and a lot of called people that are sitting in other churches and there's no place for them to use and operate their gifts. And they're sitting there, you know what they're growing? They're growing old and moldy, amen? And then they get all super spiritual and ticked off when you sit in their chair, amen? And uh, so, it's a, it's a blessing. So tonight we have uh, three speakers. We got Monday Peralta, Journey Griffin, and then Colton Elliott's going to close out the day. So, Monday... I call him Lunis. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, my name is Monday Peralta. I've been here probably this is my fourth time here. Praise the Lord. Come on. It's all right. You know, Praise the Lord. Amen. But in Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For, uh, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God and everything, Father, Father Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, over the over his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and justice from that time forever, forward, and forevermore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, he that dwelleth in the high, in the secret places of the Most High, shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. For he is my for, my refuge, my fortress. He is my God, and him I will trust. Yes. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. Woo! Father God, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, give you honor, praise, and glory for today. Father God, Lord, I ask the Lord God to open our spiritual minds, open our spiritual hearts, Father, as I give this word, Lord God, that it may pierce 
the, the people of here of this church on the street, Lord God. It may pierce the, the, the heart of hearts, Lord God. It may pierce the, 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 the people that don't understand, Lord God. But bring the conviction to the hearts of men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, the topic is choices. Alright. I'm going to give you a few examples of choices that in the Bible there was. No, it was... Okay. Um, I got this one day. Choices. Okay, this is um, in Genesis. It talks about Cain. Cain and Abel. Cain had a choice to... God warned him about this, 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 this um, continent. So he, he was feeling like you know unworthy or something. And the Lord and the Lord and the Lord told him, "Why is your continent like that?" And then, um, you know. Uh -oh. Come on. <laughs> and Cain made a choice, even when God warned him about his continent. Even when God warned him, man, he he made a choice. And he says, the, uh, you must, you must, um, you must, what do you call it? Uh, you must have the right heart. You must um, take, an, uh, what do you say? You must, um, what? Let me go to the scripture. Hold on, let's go to the scripture. All right, everything's falling apart already, all right? All right, let's go, let's go, let's do this, right? It's church on the street, let's do this right, right? Yeah. Okay, then, let's go, let's do this. Um, it says that, that the sin was knocking on his door, right? And he had to, like, submit it. If you just submit your, 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 your want, if, if you just do the right thing, everything will be well, right? Okay, then he, then, but he made a choice to go ahead and kill his brother. You know, and, and, and that's a choice. And Rahab also... I'm going back to Rahab now. I'm going to jump to Rahab. Ray, Rahab, the, 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 um, the harlot, decided to hide the spies. And then she made a choice which secured her family from generation to generation to live. Right? Then it goes down to David. David. David was a mighty man. He made a choice to kill that giant. He made a choice to face that giant when nobody wanted to face him. When everybody backed down, David said, no, you're going to die, dude. Come on, man. We're gonna, I'm going to chop your head off with your own sword. Yeah. Then I'm going to keep the sword in your own town and go back there and get it. Yeah. And also, and also, Jonah, he had a choice to run. And he ran, he ran. How many runners do we got here? All right, all right, all right. We got a lot of runners here, huh? Hey, Jonah was a runner. He made a choice to run. <sighs> then finally, God. God made a choice. God made a choice to give His only begotten Son for every single one of you. God made a choice. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said that He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. That was a choice from God because He loved us so much. To secure our our uh, our everlasting life to be with Him. Yes. Now it's a choice. So we all have choices now. Yes. Now let me get to preaching. Hey, this is the. Choices. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has made. God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall, you, you shall surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat it, the eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree of, of, was good and food, 
for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree was desirable to make one wise. She took the she took of of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and with her he ate. Then the eyes of, of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And now and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the, the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the fruit of which, of which I've commanded you that you should not eat? It's a choice. The choice was made. Then the man said, The woman whom you gave me to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than the cattle more than every beast of the field on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between her seed and, and um, your seed and her seed she, she shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his knee to the woman he says I will greatly multiply your sorrow your conception in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you now that's a choice that's the consequence of the choice. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, right? You have eaten the tree of the, which I've commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of the days of your life, all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till... You return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for the dust you are, and the dust you shall return. So those are consequences to the choices that we made. And in closure, I'm, I just want to tell you guys I'm really honored and uh, it's a privilege up here to preach to you guys. And to, to give me the opportunity to hear me out. I want to tell you guys that where it's going, by the way. All right, that the choices we make today will be the results of your tomorrow. Choose God. Well, no, choose love. Of course, choose God. But choose love. Choose peace. Choose purity. Choose love. Choose God. Choose what is righteous. And you have a choice. What God would you serve? To serve the, the world or serve of God? Now, it's your choice today of what you should do in your life. All right? All right. God bless you guys. Thank you very much. so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourselves firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give you and your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. So, with that, um, I just want to say, if we just choose God, 
That really is the key to life. It says it right there. You know, we walk around this life wondering what our purpose is and where we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to do. We're faced with decisions every day. I mean, I mean, we make decisions from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, right? I mean, I just want to ask a question. How many guys chose to wake up this morning and chose to get in your word? You. Chose to pray? Yeah? yeah? Okay. We can wake up every morning and choose that. We can choose to wake up and thank God for the day and just be like, God, thank you for another day that we get to spend knowing you more and getting closer to you. We can wake up and be negative and be like, oh, man, it's 4 in the morning again. I don't want to get up. It sucks. Sorry, but, you know, we can choose that. We can choose our attitude, can't we? I mean, it's hard, but if we choose God, I mean, it's just, it gets easier. The more we choose Him, it gets easier. Um, I know when I first got here, um, when God first got a hold of me, I was struggling a lot. Um, I was struggling with my choices because I was so wanting to be out in the world. I did not want to be here. My mom dragged me in. I was kicking and screaming, I was crying, I did not want to be here, you guys, I really didn't, but it only took a couple weeks for God to be, um, I don't know, he got a hold of my heart, and I chose to just submit, and to give my heart to him, and stop fighting, we fight God so much, you know, um, that was the best decision I've made, you guys, we can choose that, we can choose to love God. said something in the Green Beret meeting uh, really stuck with me is that um, no one can make you do anything in this whole life. No one can force you to do anything. The only thing you have to do is die. I mean, it's not, it sounds a little silly, but it's true. Like That's all you have to really do in life is die. Anything else is up to you. Anything else that you, any decisions that you make from the time you wake up to the moment you lay down, anything in between the years of your life, that is up to you. What do you want your life to be like? What decisions do you want to make? Do you want to live a life of sin, or do you want to live for the glory of God? I mean, it sounds so simple, but it really is, you guys. I want to, I'm like I'm trying to learn this too. I'm trying to grasp this myself. But um, <laughs> what do you do when no one's looking? When no one's around? Are you are you put it? Are you sneaking on that secular music, or are you, are you just hiding in the corner? I'm just saying, when you're by yourself. I'm not By yourself, what are you doing? Well, no one's looking because God's looking. He sees it. Amen. You're not being sneaky. I mean, like, we think God's up there just like looking down, like, <laughs> God isn't like that, though. You know, He loves us. He wants to help us. If we, we just ask Him, you know, if you're having a hard time choosing the right thing to do, ask Him to help you. Amen. Ask him to be like, God, change my heart. I mean, what, speaking of, I mean, speaking of David, like, God, David had a hard time with choices. You know, we all know, or most of us know the story of the choices that he made and with Bathsheba and everything, and, you know, he killed a man. And, but he, what did he do? He chose to ask God, you know, create in me a clean heart, oh God, renew a right spirit in me. says a wise person chooses the right road, a fool takes the wrong one. It's that simple. You want to be a fool? Do you? I don't know. <laughs> We're human beings, um, but we can choose to submit to God. And he will, do, he will give you the right heart. He'll give you the right mind. So just want to wake up in the morning and say, thank you, God, for another day. He'll give you that attitude of gratitude if you just ask him for it. You know, ask him to help you if you're struggling. Um, I mean, how many, how many of you have chosen to give your entire life to God? Your whole life. Just say, God, take it. Take my whole life. Yeah? Okay. Let me tell you something. As Christians, we do not have the privilege of ignorance. We don't. Did you guys catch that? We don't have the privilege of being ignorant. We know better. Amen. We need to stand up. It's tough. Huh. It is time to stand up. Okay? Yeah. Make the right decision. Choose God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to say that. We're going to sin our whole lives. No one's perfect. We all fall short. But stand up and make the decision to choose God. Just Amen. turn to Him. Give Him your attention. Give Him your love. And he will help you through it. Amen. 
First Corinthians 13, 11 says, We are not kids anymore. We choose life and stay away from sin if we want to save our own life. Oh, that's not what that says. Just kidding. I read my notes. Bear with me, I'm nervous, guys. <laughs> when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. When I grew up, I put away childish things. We're not kids anymore, is what I'm trying to say. to rise up and choose him and to help others make the same decision. We're called Amen. to be disciples. Yes. You can't help anyone make a decision if you're not making that own decision. Amen. We're not called to be hypocrites. We're called to preach. We're called to share love. We're shared, called to love on other people. But we can't do that if we're not loving God ourselves. If we're not filled with that up, we have nothing to give out. We have nothing to pour out and share. We have to be filled up first, but this is a life and death decision, guys. You know, we make little decisions throughout the day, and oh, it's not life and death. This is it. This is the life and death decision. God is calling you to stand up. Rise up for his army. You stand up for his army. You rise up for his army. You rise up for I just want to close out with this question. What will you guys choose? Are you going to choose to do that? Because... That's what God's calling you to do, so, yeah, she's done. Hallelujah. Praise be to the living God. Let's give Jesus a mighty shout of praise tonight. Come on. Let's give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. You, but if you walk through that room, we'd be on our feet screaming, shouting, clothes going off. But let me tell you something, the King of Kings, the living Christ, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, is in this room tonight. Let's give him a shout of praise, hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you tonight, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you're in this room tonight, God. I didn't just come to church to have church, to play church. I came to meet my daddy tonight. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you, guys. I mean, it's good to see all the happy faces in the room. If you have your Bibles tonight, please turn to Deuteronomy 30, chapter chapter 30, verse 19, please. And if you're there, give me an amen. Amen! I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your seed may live. Amen. I want to establish two things from the scripture firsthand. First off, I notice choose life. How many know that we live in New Testament today? That Jesus Christ is already resurrected from the grave. Choose Jesus. That's the choice we have. Jesus, they call him the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the life that we choose every day. When we wake up, thank you for that awesome point. When you wake up every morning, what are you going to choose? Choose Jesus or the world or death or the hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Next thing I notice, it says that you and your seed may live. Each and every person in this room has a seed. When God chose you before the foundations of the earth, He designated a seed for you. When you choose life, you're not just choosing life for yourself, you're choosing life for a generation. You're choosing life for a nation. When God called you, He designated you to have a, a work to do. Amen? Amen? You're not just choosing life for yourself, my friends. Joshua 24, 15, turn there. And when you're there, say Amen. Joshua 24, 15. You see, Joshua was Moses' next of... He passed on the mantle to Joshua. Moses delivered them out of Egypt. Joshua was a nation taker. He possessed the land of Israel. God told him to cross over the Jordan. And he obeyed. But he noticed something. He noticed that only by choosing God... God went with them into the promised land. And only through God's power and through God's will could they possess the land. 24.15 says, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, 
Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. That's what I'm closing with. Not right now, but we'll come back to that. Whether the gods which your fathers served that we were on the other side of the flood, or the god of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Catch this. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, he understood that without the Lord, he could do nothing. Let me tell you something today. God's not only with you, but he's for you. Amen. I don't know, that just excites me. He's not just with you, he's for you. Amen. God's so good, I'm telling you, he's changed my life. He's changed who I am. But it started with my own choice. You see, seven months ago when I was laying in a bed, I hadn't slept in seven days, and I had to make a decision whether I was going to surrender my life to God or not. And if I wouldn't have made that decision, I wouldn't be standing before you today. I wouldn't have my family back in my life. I'd still be on drugs. I'd still be in prison. I used to ask myself, why does the devil fight me so hard? Why doesn't he just leave me alone? Because I'm telling you this. If you ask yourself that question, the answer is this. The devil's scared of you. The devil's scared of what's on the inside of you, my friends. Because he understands that the same spirit that resurrected Christ lives in you. And when you recognize that identity, he's going to be defeated because he is defeated in the name of Jesus. And Jesus lives in you. So when you learn to walk and choose life, when you learn to choose Jesus, not only does he take you from where you were, but he places you above and he lets you walk over into the promised land. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give God a mighty shout of praise. It begins with a choice, though. God chose you. You didn't choose God. God set a path for you. He's called you, just as Joshua, to be nation shakers. World changers. There's not a person in this room that God has not designated you to save somebody's life. Just as he saved your own. God called us because we have people we need to impact. But as long as we're sitting in the pews choosing death, as long as we're in that corner lusting, as long as we're in that corner shooting drugs up our nose, nobody's going to get saved. We choose life. Because life chose us. Misfits. Non-deserving people. We need God. And God needs you. You can't do this on your own strength. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's time you rise up and serve the Lord, my friends. Because God in this day and age, he's not messing around. It's not time to play church, my friends. I've walked this message out the whole week. I don't even want to go into it. I'm lucky I'm still here series. It's time we quit playing church. I was playing church for the last seven months, but I'm telling you what, I told God three days ago, God, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing life. Because I understand that my testimony is not my own, but it's for the people. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to stand for your ways. I'm not going to give in to temptation. I'm not going to give in to sin no more. I'm tired of living this life of death, this cycle, this death cycle. And I'm telling you, he's here to do you're not here by chance tonight. He's calling you forth as the men and women of God that he's designated you to be before he laid the foundations of the earth. He called you. Before we were ever even in this room, before anybody walked the earth, before Adam and Eve made that choice, he chose you. Choose God. Choose life. Choose peace. It's the key to life. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity. And with that, amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God. I just want to wrap this up real quick and just kind of key in on uh, Joshua right where he was at. Verse 15, it said, he said, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord. Isn't it amazing that for some people to choose God, for some people to choose the right thing to do, it seems evil. 
You know, there's a few things that the devil does. He, he, he has a couple of names, and one of them is accuser. And one, he, he accuses in a few ways. Number one, he accuses you to God. He accuses other people to you and you to other people. And then lastly, he, he, he accuses God to you. He tries to convince you that God is evil, that God hates us, that God is trying to control us, that God is trying to take all our fun from us, that God is trying to, that God is this big killjoy, and, and, and we're just like whack-a-mole, and he's just waiting for our, our ugly heads to pop up so he can just, boom, smash us. Because I think, why, why doesn't the world choose God? Because they got the devil tuned in, and the devil's lying to them, telling them that God is evil. To choose God would be to lose blah, 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 blah. To lose what? What did we have? What was so important? What was so good? We were serving a master who hated us, abused us, lied to us, dogged us out, stole from us, killed us, lied to us, cheated on us. Come on. He let you have a good couple little memories, right? We go, we, oh yeah, well, that was fun when I did that stupid thing and whatever. <laughs> Sin has pleasure for a little while. <laughs> but we need to know and we need to be convinced with all our heart, with all our soul that God is good, amen? Yeah. That God has our best interest in heart. That life in God is the only life that there really is. You've got to learn how to enjoy the life of God. It's not easy. But we were so wrapped up in how we used to do things. But there is a joy. There is a peace. There is a strength. There is a love. There is a freedom that can only be found in Christ. There is a fulfillment and a satisfaction that can only be found in walking with God. And you could try to find it everywhere else and you will come up empty, I guarantee you. Amen? Amen. Why do we try and go back? I don't know. We're complicated. Complicated. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to try and act like I've been holy my whole life, even since I've been a Christian. Listen, it's complicated. But the ultimate choice and the ultimate decision is, you know what, I'm going to get back up, I'm going to wash myself off, I'm going to continue to move forward in Jesus Christ. Amen? That's my choice, and I'm sticking to it. He said, uh, uh, put away other gods which you served on the other side of the river, serve the Lord, uh, if it seems evil to you. And this is what I wanted to key in right here. It says, choose... For yourselves, this day, somebody say this day, this day, whom you will serve. Jesus! I want to say this about decisions, because, you know, especially in our day and age, talk is cheap and whiskey costs money, right? That's what somebody says. What's his name? <laughs> Decision choices are made daily. Amen? Amen? Now, as we mature, our choices should last longer. Amen? Our yay should be yay, our nay should be nay. And, and you make up your mind and you're hard-headed about it and you go, this is where I'm going. Amen. Nothing's going to stop me. Amen. But some, when we start, we got to start with baby steps. Today, this day, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now that choice ain't good for tomorrow. So tomorrow you got to wake up and say, Today, this day, as for me and my house, so help me God, I'm going to serve God. Amen? And this is, this is 
is the walk that we walk. It's, it's the daily decisions. It's the little things. It's the daily choices, amen? amen. That we have to make because sometimes we can, we can lose sight of that choice that we made way back then. Five years ago, ten years ago. And then we look back and we go, wow, yeah, I remember making that choice. I remember making the decision. But I really haven't kept to that commitment. And so I want to encourage you to make this decision for yourself on a daily basis. Every day is a new day. <coughs> Yesterday's blessing doesn't help me today, amen? amen. I need God today. And I thank God that He's with me today, but tomorrow, guess what? I'm going to need Him all over again. Because tomorrow brings new challenges, it brings new obstacles, it brings new things in my life. And tomorrow, I'm going to have to make a decision whom I'm going to serve. Too many people, they get out of character because they go for a little while trying to live on Sunday's blessing. And by Thursday, they're all messed up. <laughs> Thursday, they're all messed up, and they, you know, oh man, I don't know what happened. Where it's Sunday, I was up on the cloud. Yeah, I was up on Zion. You know, I'm up in the presence of God. I can smell the incense burning, and I can see the glory of God shine. I had to wear my shades. It was so bright. And Thursday, I could smell the pit of hell. <laughs> Listen, every day, choose for yourself this day and every day, amen? amen. And sometimes we just got to go like that. Sometimes, especially if you're called, especially if you got an anointing on your life, especially if you got a ministry, let me tell you something, the devil ain't going to let up on you tomorrow because you got blessed yesterday. Amen. Hello? He ain't going to... Uh uh. If I just came to church and I just sat there and, and looked cute and, and gave my little hallelujahs and my amens and my God bless you's and, you know, love you, brother, he ain't gonna mess with me. But I start preaching and I start teaching. I start teaching other people how to preach. I start going into jails and preaching in jail. I start going out to the mission and teaching class. Guess what? Now I'm ticking them off. And every day. We've got to fight that battle. Every day, we've got to make the decision to serve God. And so I would just want to share. Some of you have never made that decision. You've never made that commitment. You weren't ready, whatever that means. I understand that, and I respect that to a certain extent. If you ain't ready, you ain't never going to be ready. you got to come to God how you are and let Him clean you up. Let Him change you. Let Him transform you. You don't even have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You can't change yourself. You can't change. You don't have enough willpower. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Come to God and just be honest and say, God, I can't do it. I need you. And I come to you a mess. When I came to Christ in 1988, I still had cocaine in my system. I still had, I'm not even going to talk about it, none of your business, but you know, <laughs> I almost said something. I'm just telling you, but that decision, amen, gave me the strength and the power to make other decisions. When you make right decisions and you make good decisions, they set you up for better decisions. Amen? See, so many of us have set ourselves up to fail for so long, that's all we know how to do. Some of us need to learn how to set ourselves up to succeed. Amen? The Bible says God is not mocked. You will reap what you sow. And so many of us, we're negative, so we look at that in a negative way. Oh, I can't do five bad things because then five bad things are going to happen to me. But it's also for the good. 
Don't grow weary in well doing because if you don't stop, guess what? It's their blessings are going to catch you. They're going to overtake you. Amen. Keep sowing good seed. Keep doing the right thing. Keep making the right choices because it's strengthening you to make better decisions and better choices and to continue to go far in your walk with the Lord. Amen. If you've never made that decision, I believe right now that God is in His place. And I want to ask all saints praying. Pray. Pray right now. For those who don't know Jesus. For those who've been teeter-tottering with making a decision and a choice to serve God. Pray that, that today God would give them the courage. That today they would, they would stand up and, and this would be the first day of the rest of their lives. In the presence of God. And brother. Sister. You're here. Not by accident. Not by coincidence. God brought you here today. And he's asking you to make a choice. I set before you life. Death. I set you before you blessing. Cursing. Aren't you tired of the death? Aren't you tired of the cursing? Aren't you tired of the emptiness? Aren't you tired of the hurt? Aren't you tired of the pain? God's saying, I got peace. I got joy. I've got love for you. Choose me. Choose me. Please choose me. Let me demonstrate my love to you. Let me reveal myself to you. The Bible says, if we will draw near to God, that he would draw near to us. There's a beautiful little story about the prodigal son. In it. And that's just simply a young man who told his father, just give me my inheritance. Just give me, you know, half of the business and, and, and I'm going to just take off and I'm going to make my own way. And the Bible says that he went out and he just, he spent all his money and he, you know, he had a good time and he, he, he partied and he drank and he went out for a while and it was good for a while. But then, you know, he didn't make his right investments and, and the money ran out. He found himself eating pig slop. And the Bible said he came to his senses and he said, even my father's lowest workers, even his slaves eat better than this. I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to go back to my father and ask if I could just be a slave. And the Bible says that while he was still far away, his father saw him coming. And his father said, my son is coming. Let's throw a party. Get him some clothes. Let's make, let's, let's kill a cow and, and have a barbecue. My son is coming. And he said he ran to his son. What a beautiful picture of our God. He wasn't sitting there in judgment. He wasn't there with an I told you so. He wasn't there with, well, you made your decision. Now you got to lie in it. He said, my son who was once dead is now alive. And he went running to him, hugged him, cleaned him up, put on some new clothes on him, gave him a ring back. You're my son. You will never be a slave. And I want to let you know that you make the choice today to serve God. And here God comes running to embrace you. Father God, right now, Lord, I just pray, Lord, for those who need to make that decision tonight. Give them the courage. In Jesus' name. Right now, if that's you, go ahead and raise your hand. That's you. You've never made a decision, or maybe you've made a decision, but you know that decision wasn't serious. Come on forward right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, yeah, let's give these a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you made the decision. 
leaders, pastors. You've been trained how to pray for people. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray for these men with men, women with women. Come on. Close in right here. Close in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're making a choice to be serious. You're making a choice to be who God called you and created you to be, who He intended you to be from the beginning of the world. You're making a decision to let Him make the decisions for you. To let Him guide you, to trust that His Word is true. To trust that He has your best interests at heart. <clears throat> the Bible says if you would believe in your heart and confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died for your sins, and rose again on the third day, that you shall be saved. I pray that you believe that in your heart. The best way to prove that you believe that in your heart is by living for Him. Every day make a choice. God, today is your day. Today you gave me life and I give my life back to you. Father, I thank you for these, God. I thank you for these, Lord God. And I know right now that there's a party going on in heaven. There's a party going on in heaven. Because Satan, you don't have this one anymore. And you don't have that one anymore. And this one isn't yours anymore either. They belong to God. They are children of the living God. Plug yourself into this church. Draw close to somebody who loves God. Let yourself be taught. Be discipled. Seek God with all of your heart. Watch what He will do with your life. You won't believe it. Life will turn into an adventure. And it'll be a blessing. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody praise the Lord up in here. Yes, Lord God, we praise You. We thank You. For those of you who are up here, go ahead and raise your hands. Raise your hands to God and just say, God... I surrender to you. I give you all my life. I give you all my heart and all my soul. Everything that I have is yours. I trust you with my family. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my decisions. I trust you with my future. I give myself to you 100%, Lord God. And help me to walk this out every single day. Living for you. Until you return. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Church on the street, you are dismissed.